Let's go back, uh, scroll up here to time experiment, and, uh, and I will explain how I have improved these methods a little bit more, tweaking them slightly. And I'd love to hear even further tweaks if anyone has any. So what we have is we, I created this method called a draw bitboard. You just give it a, a long, a bitboard, and it uh, puts it into an array, and it uh, prints it out. Not very efficiently, but I just slapped it together from some previously existing code. And so that way I'll be able to visualize what my board is. So if you ever send a bit, draw bitboard with a, uh, the WP, the white pawn board, then you will be able to visualize where it's seeing all the, the pawns in that board. So what I've done is created this loop length of 1,000, and uh, I set a start time, then we call a method A, then we get the long end time, and then we calculate the time difference between start and end by taking end time and subtracting start time from it, figuring out how many milliseconds have it has taken to run method A. Then we do the same with method B, and we will then compare these two output lines of code to see which method is faster. So you can use this all over the place. Method A loops over this loop length of 1,000 is what I have it currently, and this is our current method. We come up with uh, pawn moves, and then we loop from the starting spot to the ending spot. Now in method B, what I've done is a modification. I still have the same pawn moves. Then I still create this list. But then this is the part that's different. I create this uh, uh, bit board called possibility. And what it's going to do is it's going to be the possibility. Let's say these, were the, these pawns represented all the captures that are possible to the right. It's going to go and find the very first. Uh, its possibilities is going to be only the very first bit that's encountered. So it'll be the bit board that looks like that without these other two wherever they were. So it'll be like this. It'll only grab that first one. And then it will, I have draw bit board just so you can see what it looks like. Uh, and then what it will do is it'll get the index. So let's say it did grab this very first one here that I'm blinking here. And it will say, oh, this is, uh, let's say, the uh, 28th uh, bit or something like that. The 28th bit, OK. And with that, we can now create our list. And then what I do is I take pawn moves and I say, OK, we've dealt with that one, delete it. That's where this uh, line comes in. It removes that piece that we've talked about. And then it does that very same line it now finds the next first bit in the new uh, mo pawn moves bit board. So it'll grab this one here, and it will delete everything else. And then it'll find the index of that and add the move. Then it will delete that, and now we're only on the last one. So let me run this just to show you kind of what it looks like here. All right, so we start our first loop. And let's look at the output here. You'll see here's the first pawn. And uh, board generation, by the way, I've created it to look like this. So I've added an example where a pawn capture is possible here, here, and here. So we should see that in the output. So here's that top one. I run it again. And there's one of the bottom ones. I run it again. There's the other bottom one, and I run it a last time, and we come up with uh, the end of the loop. That's all it found. Now, what this did is it is extra calculations for sure. There are more math per item, but it goes exactly to each piece. It doesn't loop through empty squares. So if there were only three items, it only does the loop three times instead of also looping through all these empty squares in the middle. And it tends to be, in my experience and testing, a little bit faster. So let's run this comparison here. I'll delete this draw bit board, because that would slow my method down. Uh, and you will see, 
from the output here that the first one took 44 milliseconds, second one took uh, uh, 33, I believe it was. Let's look again here, 43, 31. So it tends to be a little bit faster. Um, now, if we were to make it more radical, for instance, if I had a, let's say, a pawn there and a pawn there, you will find that the difference is bigger, 65 to 31. The reason is the second method, the new modified method that I've created, didn't have to loop through as many empty squares. But what I've done is I've situated the pawn so that there's a whole lot more empty squares that's going to have to look for. And so that in those scenarios, it's faster. In scenarios, for instance, where both are uh, fairly equal, so let's put a, a pawn at every spot so that each ca every capture right that's possible happens in a row there. Then when we run it, There we go. Then we run it. We still find that I'm actually surprised at the results. There might be something I'm doing wrong here. But it should uh, always be uh, faster or the same. Uh, one other thing I will show here. Uh, so we have our very first one running consistently in this mode at about 9900 milliseconds here. If I were to change uh, method A, as we had said was a simpler idea, just looping through everyone from 0 to 64, then if I were to run this, uh, there we go, now you'll see it takes uh, uh, 60 milliseconds in this scenario. So it's actually a little bit faster just to go from zero to uh, the very to 64 in this case. It all depends on what kind of board position you're analyzing and what you find works for you in general. So this is highly experimentative, and that's why I've created this uh, time experiment comparison thing. And you can try it against various boards. The best way is to search a variety of boards and to uh, come up with uh, uh, an approximation of what on average happens because you will you can modify the boards to cater to being faster or slower in uh, with certain ways of typing the code in certain situations so it's uh, trying to find that balance of uh, for the majority of the time you want your engine to run faster so uh, that is it for this tutorial. I hope that you have uh, got some stuff out of this and that I haven't rushed it too much. There's just been a ton of stuff I wanted to get through. Hopefully all this makes sense. Uh, we'll add uh, two more things. Uh, these are some web pages I really like. One is Mediocre Chess. Uh, just Google Mediocre Chess and you'll find this blog. It's just a guy who goes through uh, uh, his own process of making a chess engine and, and his thought process. And so it's, it's useful to people who are interested in knowing how to write chess and how other programmers are thinking and solving problems. And, and he just gives some suggestions from personal experience. And the other one is Stockfish, currently on version 4. Uh, and feel free, the reason I mention this is not only because it's a great engine uh, and it's free, uh, it's, it's always in one of the top... Uh, uh, currently, it's number two in the world, um, but uh, it's always a fantastic engine. And uh, feel free to, if you scroll down under this open source, this big green circle thing, click on Available on GitHub, and you can have a look at the source code. Now, this code is not written in Java, which is probably a good thing, or it wouldn't have been uh, as uh, powerful as it currently is, go into SRC, which is script, 
uh, it, it's sort of the same as a, a source, maybe is what it stands for. And then you can look at all the files. So you can look at uh, the book file, open it up, and you can have a look at the code. All code is available online. Now this is obviously looking uh, really complicated. That's because it uses polyglot uh, boards it's compatible with, and it requires all these numbers. It's not as complicated as you might think. Anyway, feel free to look at it. It might be a little overwhelming, but uh, it may also just be helpful to some of you. All right, until next time, enjoy programming.